This salute to our veterans on Eagle Communications Television brought to you by American Shooters, Auto Collision Specialist, Cedarview Assisted Living, Centennial Carpets, Cross Manufacturing, DNL Body Shop, Diamond R Jewelry, Downing Nelson Oil Company, GNL Tire and Automotive, Hayes Convention and Visitors Bureau, Hayes Planing Mill, James Motor Company, Katz Hallmark Shop, Midwest Energy, Orchland Farm and Home, Paul's Lawn and Tree Service, The Pheasant Run, Radkey Implement, Service Master Clean of Hayes, Sternberg Museum, Thirsties, Tri Central Office Supply, Truck Parts and Equipment, Walmart, Walsinger Brothers Plumbing and Heating, Coldwell Banker Executive Realty, Commerce Bank, Gone Logo, Hess Services, Keithley Funeral Homes, Leon's Welding and Fabrication, Patty Bacon Ride Appraising, Steel Fabrications, The Almond Company, and Eagle Communications. May I have your attention, please? <coughs> we'll have the color guard present the colors. Please rise. Honor guard, present colors. Say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the power to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Kathy, Chuck McGill. We'll introduce Father Leo. Okay, I thought you all could sit down, but he says no. Prior to being ordained a priest in June of 2017, Father Leo Blasey of Immaculate Heart of Mary Church had another title. It was Sir. Father Leo joined the Kansas Army National Guard in 1985 as an aircraft electrician and attended flight school in 1998. 1988. He served in both Bosnia and Iraq during operations Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, and New Dawn, where he flew a Black Hawk helicopter evacuating wounded soldiers. Father Leo retired in 2014 from the Army National Guard, having 29 years of service, 11 of which were on active duty. Having lost his wife in 2011, and being a parent of six children, he looked for a new direction for himself, and he found it in the ministry. Very recently, Father Leo was invited to Washington, where he blessed the groundbreaking of the Eisenhower Memorial. And we are certainly very pleased to have him here today to open our Veterans Day ceremony in prayer. Father Leo. God of power and mercy, we thank you for this glorious day, the sun to light our way, and the calm in which we pray. Lord, you destroy war and you put down earthly pride. Help us to set aside all political and cultural differences as we pray for all those who have parted from us, lost in the service of our country and to her people, and for all those who serve her yet today. Banish all violence from our midst and wipe away our tears that we may all deserve to be called your sons and daughters. Yet no one yearns more for true peace than those whose job it is to defend the peace. Spare the poor, O Lord, who have nothing to defend themselves 
as we remember the cost of our freedom and liberty. Keep in your mercy those men and women who have died in the cause of freedom and bring them safely to your heavenly kingdom of justice and peace. Also watch over those, Lord, who serve you today and who suffer from the gift of their service because of trauma and tragedy. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and your Son, our Savior, Victor, and Redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Father Leo, for that splendid, splendid, splendid <coughs> essay. Thank you. Honor Guard, fall out. You may be seen. It is my honor to introduce our VFW commander, Les Smith. I was also told just a little while ago by Joe Klaus that the VFW was, was entered in 1947, so we're also having our 70th birthday this year. VFW here at Post 9076, our 70th birthday. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everybody here today to the Veterans Day ceremony. I would like to introduce my officers, Senior Vice Commander and Adjutant Mike Morley, if I can understand, Junior Vice Commander William Newman, Chaplain Stan Dryling, Judge Advocate Ken Havener, Sergeant Jim Dinkle, Service Officer Chris Stegman. Thank you. Oh, this wasn't on your list. Quartermaster Kathy. <laughs> See, she likes to make an entry, so I forgot her so she can do it herself. So. Oh, there we go. There we go. Excuse me, ma'am. And, uh, We'd like to introduce our auxiliary. Uh, the auxiliary, we used to have two auxiliaries here, a ladies and a men's. They've now combined. So uh, I don't know if you guys want to enter. Jason, do you want to come up here? And, oh, no thanks. Commander, Jason Hudson Pillar. Senior Vice Commander, Dale Schmidt. Junior Vice Commander Randy Lang, Quartermaster Don Dreyer, Secretary, oh boy, Casey Callahan. Callahan. I'd like to have a round of applause for them. You do the rest of it or do I? Thanks. <laughs> We'd like to acknowledge the following uh, organizations. Our American Legion Commander, Vance Charger, is he here? There you go. Thank you, sir. Auxiliary Commander, Ruth Lang. Sons of the American Legion Commander, Jerry Hoffman. American Legion Riders Director, Ray Palmer. I've seen Ray, there he is. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Marine Corps League Commander, Robert Munch. He's here, I know he was. 
Kansas Army National Guard, Major Cade Garst, Administrative Officer. Is he here today? Yeah. Vietnam Veterans of America, 939. Huh? John Pyle, is he here today? And the Military Order of the Purple Heart, I don't know whether anybody's here from that. It's a very important organization. We also would like to recognize the following veterans groups. If you could stand when we announce your group. The Army. We thank all of you for your service. The Navy. We thank all of you for your service. The Air Force. Thank you for your service. The Marines. Army National Guard. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. Army Reserves. The Coast Guard. Oh. Okay, now we'll have, uh, I believe, two songs from the Fort Hayes State Singers. Our first song is uh, not so much patriotic as a dedication to serve, and we know uh, and we honor you who, when called, uh, serve both your nation and your God. It's called Here I Stand. So with our hearts and 
we salute all of those who stood for the rest of us and preserved our freedom. Our second song is uh, not so much a patriotic song, but a reminder, hopefully, to you men and women who served uh, overseas of what home was like, a popular tune that reminded you of your lovers, your loved ones, and uh, where you longed to be. It's called Smile. I hope you recognize it. That's a great generation coming, gentlemen and ladies. Let's give them another hand. Next, I'm going to ask Commander Smith to introduce our first speaker, Les. Thank you, Sam. Today is my honor to introduce my son-in-law, First Sergeant Leslie G. Wing. His wife, Teresa, of 32 years, accompanying him. Two of his sons, Tyler and Sean Wing, both veterans of the War on Terror. All three are life members of this post. And the third son, Alex, currently serving the Army National Guard as a medic. Sergeant Wing attended Hayes High School, Fort Hayes State, and Salina Voc Tech Training School. He enlisted 25 August 1986. Served August 86 to August 88 as a tactical microwave and satellite communication system repair. 88 to 91, he was a production recruiter 91 to 97, training NCO, Hollitzer Section Chief. 97 to 03, Readiness NCO, Gunnery Sergeant, Chief of Firing Battery. 03 to 04, Readiness NCO, Master Gunner. 04 to 06, Operations Sergeant. 06 to 07, Recruiting Area NCOIC. October 07 to October 08, 
He was a first sergeant. In November 08 to 12, he served as operations sergeant major. While serving his country for 26 years, Sergeant Wing acquired the Bronze Star Medal, Army Meritorial Service Medal with two Bronze Oak Leaf Clusters, Army Commendation Medal with two Bronze Oak Leaf Clusters, Army Achievement Medal with one Silver Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Good Conduct Medal, Armed Forces Reserve Medal, Army Reserve Components Assignment Medal, National Defense Service Medal with one star, Global War on Terrorism Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Iraqi Campaign Medal, Overseas Service Ribbon, National Guard Master Recruiter Badge. Last assignment was Acting Operations Sergeant Major of the 287th Sustainment Brigade. I can introduce Master Sergeant Leslie G. Wing. Good morning. I'd like to say thanks again for Fort A State. That, that sounded pretty good. What a great day to be here, see that uh, beautiful mural dedicated. So it kind of plays into a little bit of what I want to talk about. It's an honor to be here today and speak with much of my fellow veterans. The writer Michael D. Montaigne once said, valor is stability, not of legs and arms, but of courage and soul. From Flanders Fields to the mountains of Afghanistan, we stand here to remember our valiant service members who by their courage, dedication, achievements and sacrifices have kept America strong and free. Thinking of the heroes who join us in this group today and those who are here only in spirit, a person can't help but feel awed by the enormity of what we encounter. We stand in the midst of patriots, the family and friends of those who have honorably served. The service members we honor today come from all walks of life, but they shared several fundamental qualities. They possessed courage, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty, and integrity. In addition to these qualities, they shared a commitment to the oath we took to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic. We share pride in our service and our country. We stand for the national anthem and the raising and passing of the colors. We know too well the pain we feel when we hear taps. We also are part of history. Whether we held the line, kept the vehicles running, ensured critical supply, supplies kept moving forward, or cleared the skies and seas of enemy action, or inventoried the personal effects of a fallen comrade, we all played an important role in history. In his speech to the Corps of Cadets at West Point in 1962, General Douglas MacArthur said this about soldiers. He belongs to history as furnishing one of the greatest examples of successful patriotism. He belongs to posterity as the instructor of future generations in the principles of liberty and freedom. He belongs to the present, to us, by his virtues and his achievements. This is important history. This is our history. And we gather places like this to meet old friends and make new acquaintances, and we share our stories with one another. We remember the good times and share a laugh, or maybe we remember the loss of a buddy and shed a tear with someone who knows what that pain feels like. Millions of Americans have fought and died on battlefields here and abroad to defend our freedoms and way of life. 
Today our troops continue to make the ultimate sacrifices, and even as we lose troops, more Americans step forward to say, I'm ready to serve. They follow the footsteps of generations of great Americans. We have awarded many medals to many soldiers, added their names to monuments, and named buildings for them to honor them for their bravery. But nothing can ever replace the whole left by a fallen comrade. And no member, number of medals and ribbons can comfort the ones that were left behind. There's an old saying that goes something like this. Those that forget history tend to repeat it. I remember this when I read about removing statues and monuments of historical figures because it's offensive to some. It's time for us to defend our history, share our stories, not just with the people we meet in these halls, but with those who would become our future leaders at club meetings, schools, or maybe we just put our thoughts on paper for future generations to recall. We have a duty to preserve our history, protect it, and by that duty we remember the sacrifices of our service members, the ones they made. As a somber phrase on the POWMIA flag states so clearly, lest we forget. And the motto on the Army flag, this will defend. Your presence here today and that of the people gathering all across America is a tribute to those serving, those who have served, those we have lost, and also their families, is a way to say we remember. From the soldiers that shivered and starved through the winter at Valley Forge, to the doughboys crouched in the muddy trenches of France, to the platoon who patrolled the hazy jungles in Vietnam and those young men and women still patrolling the mountains of Afghanistan. We remember them all. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. God bless you and your families, and God bless the troops. God bless America. Thank you. I'd like to ask that Kathy Shookman to come up here and introduce our next speaker. Kathy's a member of our Honor Guard and she keeps us, us guys all tuned up. <laughs> Don't forget she's a quartermaster. She'll yeah. get you. <laughs> While I'm sure there are very few present here today, that do not know the name Don Bickle. Many may be surprised to learn that Mr. Bickle is a veteran of World War II and the Korean War, having served two tours in the Navy. When I first visited with Mr. Bickle, see that look? <laughs> he said, what do you want? <laughs> and I asked him why he volunteered to serve. His first words were duty, honor, and country. That mantra continued throughout our discussions, and it became very apparent that those terms still mean so very much to him today. Mr. Bickle has a uniquely interesting story about his time in service and where that led him. But not only is he a veteran, he is also a part of DOCA, which stands for Defense Orientation Conference Association. I mention this because it is with these, his activities in DOCA that brought Mr. Bickle to meeting with the Contras in Honduras next to the El Salvador border on January 26, 1989, to China during the Tiananmen Square Uprising on May 14, 1989, to Czechoslovakia on the eve of their first free election in 44 years, and to Germany at Checkpoint Charlie and East Berlin before the wall came down. Here today as a guest speaker, 
about his service to the flag he continues to honor today. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Don Bickle. I wish from the bottom of my heart I could say thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> he really does mean it. <laughs> I tell you, this morning, my comments are not going to be necessarily about all the veterans and the like. <clears throat> I can tell you, I've been all around the world several times, and there's nowhere in this living world that compares to the United States of America. I can, <laughs> I first went into service, I in fact, I only went to three years of high school and my father had been in World War I, and I had no problem with him, but my mother had other thoughts. I quit after my junior year and joined the Navy. I really wanted to be a fighter pilot, but being almost 18, there's a lot of things I didn't know anything about. And one, the guy that was looking for enlistments didn't bother to tell me after I told him what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. <laughs> you know, that's a joke. I was almost clear through the first go around and I still didn't have a high school diploma. In those days, if you had a high school diploma, you could get into the fighter planes, so to speak. I thank the military because when, if it hadn't been for them, I don't know exactly where I would be today. I had a gunnery officer that took a liking to me and he said, you didn't finish high school? I said, no, sir, I didn't. He said, do you care if I call home and check on that? What are you gonna say? <laughs> I said, no, sir, I don't, I don't care. He picked up the telephone, not just that moment, but in a, in a couple of days, and called the superintendent of schools and the principal. And he said, what does this young man need to graduate with his class? And they told him. He said, well, I'm a full professor at Texas A&M. I was a reservist, I was called back in. If I would promise faithfully to tutor him personally would you allow him to graduate with his class? Back in those days in our schools, they believed in God and country, and it was no problem whatsoever. They said, no problem. You tutor him, he'll graduate with his class. Well, so be it, he did tutor me and I finally learned to study. <laughs> and I can tell you some of the things that we went over, he wasn't suggesting, he was demanding. <laughs> and I did study and I did get my high school diploma with my class. After that, we were pretty well wound up in Europe in the light, but we hadn't dropped a bomb yet in China. And he said, now look, if we start releasing the reserves, will you go to college? 
Hell, I felt I was lucky to graduate from high school. <laughs> and I, I said, well, I'd thought about it. And he said, don't think about it. Make up your mind, will you or won't you? And I thought for a little bit. And he said, I'll tell you what. If you do, I guarantee you, you'll be one of the first to leave this ship to get back with your class. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> well, that happened. And I got back, and I was like to have gone to school at Fort Hayes, but it was, in those days, it was Fort Hayes State College. But everybody around there called it <clears throat> Fort Hayes State Teachers College. I didn't want to be a teacher. I wanted to get in the school of business. So I ended up going to K-State. I graduated in 50. And of course, you know, when I got out the first time, they said, go ahead, go to college, uh, get your degree, get your commission, you'll be in it. And you don't have to worry. Hell, the inactives will never be called. <laughs> <laughs> I, I graduated in 50, and before Christmas, I was back in. <laughs> well, I did. You had to be at a permanent duty station 90 days to make application. <laughs> well, I, I'll put it on. I'll just cut this off to the quit. It was almost time to get out. And my application went in and I was accepted. Well, I'd learned to check the, the fine print. I could have been one of those great 90 D wonders. And in the fine print, it indicated that if you do that, you'll be in for, I don't remember now exactly, four or six years. I said, guys, if you made an admiral out of me, I don't believe I'd stay that long. <laughs> so anyhow, I got out and I came back and went to work. And I love Hayes, Kansas. I think it's the greatest place in the world. And my neighbor, Ross Beach, who had been in the military. He'd heard of a, an organization called DOCA, I think you mentioned. It's a nonpartisan, it covers all of the, um, the Army, the Air Corps, the Marines, the Navy, the whole bit, Coast Guard. And we think that we're the best friends that the armed services had because the first Secretary of Defense in 1948 started this organization, and the real reason for it was that the general public should have some concept, a little more so than they did at the current time, of what's going on in the service. So he picked people, the top people in the country, they were most all veterans, to be in this first group. And that went on for a little while, and that was called JCOC. That was the Joint Civilian Orientation Conference Association. And they got a few of them, but they weren't getting enough. So they started what they call defense orientation. That's what you were, were speaking about. And then you could get in, you didn't have to have the, the Secretary of Defense appoint you or recommend you. And anybody that had passed JCOC or the like could then, they could go out and get other members. And that's what Beach did. He 
grabbed me and uh, I became a member. And I can tell you, it is totally all the trips, and I can say I made over 50 trips around the world. I've been to many places, and I, I can tell you, in those 50 places and the like, Doka, everything is funded by the individual. We paid our own airfare, like when we went to China, for instance. We paid to eat with the veterans in the service because the first thing that we did when we got to a foreign country was go to the embassy. And in the embassy, they had what they called country team briefings for people that was in the embassy. We had somebody in agriculture, somebody in medicine, somebody in commerce and industry, somebody in agriculture. They were all specialists so that we could be informed about what was going on in that particular country. We'd have a better idea. And then when we went out, we visited first our armed services that were in that country. And when we were through with that, we then got involved with the other military in the country. And I can tell you, it in itself is an education. We learned a lot of things. And we have Southcom, for instance. The general of Southcom was in charge of all the operations in Central America. At that particular time, most all of the countries in Central America were considered democratic. Every change of command does different things, but I remember one particular general, and he thought, we're not getting out of these countries what we need to help us all. So he suggested that we bring in our military people that had something to do with medicine, to work in the hospitals and the like. Somebody else on ag, somebody else on the army. Just, he, he come up with the idea that if we get all the people involved, we're gonna be able to get more done down there. And that taught me something. I think that goes for us today. We need to get out of the VFW and the American Legion and get to talk more to other people in our own area. A good example would be our schools. And I say our schools because I'm interested very much so. And I catch a little hell from time to time because I am a Protestant. But I can tell you, I back TMP 100%. And it's simple. TMP, they believe in God and country. In our school system today, you can be in jail or in prison and you can take a Bible and you can read it. Don't take it to school with you. You could be in trouble. And I think it's high time that we get involved. And thank you, Lord, my wife had to go to a wedding in the family today down in Abilene. She says, honey, you know, everybody doesn't think like you do. Don't, don't say all that stuff. Thank God she's gone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
because I believe strongly in God and country. This is one of the few nations where we can really believe in God and country. And it's just beginning to get permeated again. I hope there aren't too many of you that are school teachers that maybe took offense to my speaking about school teachers. We've got some wonderful teachers in our educational system. Unfortunately, we've been banned from the Bible. And, and, and I think you do a wonderful job. I had a, a daughter come back for my uh, 90th birthday. And incidentally, that wife of mine, I told her I'm getting old. She said, no, honey, you're not getting old. You are old. <laughs> But anyhow, I, I can tell you, these kids are something else today. They need our help, they need our guidance. And that means a lot of you guys are retired or the like. You could have a lot more fun getting involved. Yes, I'm 90, I'm still down at the office at seven in the morning. We had an idiot for president a, a couple of years ago, and so I gave my company away. I no longer own S&W and Warehouse. My two boys do. And believe me, if I've found out, I don't own it anymore. <laughs> I, I do get $600 a month. <laughs> <laughs> for being chairman of the board. Well, look, I've got to move on. I, I, I told Kathy, keep me on time. Yes, I was in China during the Tiananmen Square, and I saw these kids marching. We went by, we, and incidentally, we were staying in a state guest house, and that drives home another point. They had walls as high as this, this wall over here, all around the, the compound. That's where all the, the leaders from other parts of the country, any politicians, the big time ones, they got to stay in there. And I failed to tell you, when we traveled, we traveled on orders from the Department of Defense and State, and we were pretty well leveled out on what we were doing and where we were going. Because we were supposed to find out and come back and tell you people. And the mistake I made, the reason I'm here, I think, I spoke to the Rotary Club a few years ago, and I think that had some bearing on why I was here talking about DOCA. Well, in China, I can tell you something, these kids, were well-mannered and minored when they were going down. We, the, the first day we went by Tenement Square and there was people there, nothing a big deal. About the third day we went by there, there was a half a million students in there. And everywhere we went, there was hundreds coming in. And believe it or not, they had yarn like grandma used and some of you girls do, knitting or crochet, whatever you do with yarn. And on both sides of those marchers, everybody stayed within those, that, that yarn. And they marched on down and I can tell you, we got ready to, to leave China, or let me put it this way, a little before. Coming down, these tanks were coming down, rolling down, but those particular people were from right around Beijing, and people, everything was pretty smooth. But the hierarchy was not satisfied. 
we, the things that they were espousing was kind of Americanized. And so they called out the hinterland. And when those guys come in and the tanks come down, you wanted to get the hell out of the way because they think, wouldn't think twice about running over you. And really, the kids were taken care of up front for some time. But then the, the hawkers, so, the, so to speak, they called them. They were selling hats and all kinds of tinkers, but they didn't pay any tax on it. It was going into problem in pocket. They got to infiltrating, and pretty soon when they did, it was hell to pay. And I know when we left, we were lucky to get out of there. She's telling me you talked long enough. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, and, and I'll bring it up. We met with the Contras in Honduras, and it was something else. We did do that. We were in Czechoslovakia on their first free election in 44 years. I put that down because we had a young man in Korea who picked a poster up off of the wall and you know what happened to him. He died out of prison. They sent him home and he died here. I'll never forget in Czechoslovakia, they had posters up. And you're looking at a guy that picked up one of those posters. And I didn't think anything about it. I brought it home. And then I got to thinking after this young guy, that's all he did was picked up a poster in North Korea and he's dead, dead. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked long enough I could talk all day about some of these trips because I still tell you, there's no place in this whole wide world as great as the United States of America where we, where we can still believe in God and country. Thank you. thank um, Mr. Bickle for coming because, guys, he did not want to. <laughs> His words were, Kathy, I, I wasn't shot at particularly, I wasn't injured, but um, what resonated for me is I've been an uh, active part of the VFW now for three years, and for the past three years, I have seen him and his wife, Chris, sit in the back of the room and never draw attention to himself, but was always here to support. And that is what you are all doing here today. And that means so very, very much. There are people here that had to go out of their way to be here, people here from Via Christi Healthcare Center. Uh, we are on Facebook Live for Tony Reuter, who's at Via Christi right now. These gentlemen still need to be honored and given the respect for what they've done to lead us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bickle. Again, let's give Don and, and, and Sergeant Major Wing a great round of applause again. <laughs> Next, it's my honor to introduce our honor guard. Uh, when, I, when I mention your name, uh, please, please rise. Uh, Gary Albright. Please stay standing, Jim Dinkle. Julie Angel, Alan Gutchock, Morris Hurl, Joe Klaus, Merle McLaren, Dan McNeil, Mike Morley, Al Pfeiffer, Tony Reuter, of course Tony uh, was a member of Honor Guard, he's, he's in the restaurant right now, uh, Alan Roth, Leroy Shookman, 
Kathy Shookman, Les Smith, Tom Staub, Pete Unrein, I think Pete's been around someplace. We've got Dave Walsinger, and uh, also we got two, uh, Dan Huffman. Dan was a member of Honor Guard, and he's kind of semi-retired. Now I'd like to ask our Honor Guard, I'm gonna introduce the World War II veterans, and I'd like to have you go by them and bring them up to the podium, would you please? First one, we got Don Bickle. Kathy, you wanna bring Don? Where did he leave? Did he leave? Okay, well, uh, Vance Carlson, Vance, Jim, you want to bring him? Yeah. Al Dryling, Al Dryling is 97 years old, Al. I'll get Al. I love yeah. Al. Yeah. We have uh, Vince Dryling, I don't think Vince is here, he's 96. Uh, Ralph Angle. Ralph, you want to, Ralph, you want, uh, Warren Hall, Warren's 96, Get. yeah, sit the guys, yeah, thank you, Calvin Harbin, Last year he was 102, but I think he's 103 now. Cal, would you bring him up here? Yeah. Yeah. You want to get a chair? I'll move this. We're going to get pictures of you guys, so stay with us. Uh, Ray Herman, 90 years old, originally from Russ Hayes, but he lives in Russell. Dan Huffman is 94. Dan? Uh, George Lang. Is George here? George is 93. Ed Moore is, is 94. Ed? Chair up there on this side, maybe. Why don't you get him? Harry Ostrom. Harry's 94, and he was telling me when I told him to come visit us this on Veterans Day, he just got back from a honor flight. He went to Washington, D.C. And it's the first time in 94 years he flew an airplane. <laughs> yeah. And his son, who's also a Marine, why he's got the honor of uh, presenting the, 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 at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers, the, 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 the colors. Uh, Bob Pfeiffer, Bob. He's 90, an Army veteran. You got Joe Piper, I don't know if Joe's here or not. Joe? Dr. John Percorny, is the doc here? Of course, we have Tony Reuter. Tony Reuter's in the St. Uh, B. Christie rest home right now. Uh, Bob Sheeler, Bob Shiler, or Bob? Uh, Wendland Schindler, Wendland. Wendland's 91. Uh, Speck Woods, 92. And my good friend, uh, Russ Clark, Russ. 
Is there anybody I missed by chance? Is Lawrence Oakers here by chance? Mike Carmichael, Mike, he was here last year. Frank Fonestill, how about Frank Fonestill? Is Frank around? These gentlemen are my heroes. I hope they're all your heroes too, Wise. Uh, now we'll have the four day singers uh, uh, sing the, it's, a, it's, it's for them, for a World War II veteran, so. Give him a round of applause. Please, uh, please sit down. We've got a couple more things to go through. Yeah. It's my honor to uh, ask uh, Cindy Nicholson to come up here. Cindy. She comes. Yeah, you should. Doug, you're part of this. Come on. Come on up, Doug. I know it's been six years since my son was killed in Afghanistan. He was the pilot on Extortion 17. We miss him. I miss him. And if Mr. Dryling would have been at the dealership more times than I stopped for, then I wouldn't have to be standing here with my eyes getting watery. But anyway, Brian loved what he was doing. He enjoyed flying with his dad on remote control airplanes. His dad was a Vietnam veteran, so Brian wanted to follow in his dad's footsteps. Anyway, Brian has two brothers and a sister that also miss him. And we have been honored so much by the VFW and the community. And I don't know if you realize when the procession went through for Brian that Little Texas came through and they didn't know what was going on. So they found out that who it was and what had happened. And he, they wrote a song called A Slow Ride Home. And if you've ever listened to it or seen the, the video of it, Brian's picture's in there with his son, Braden, and his wife, Mary. But anyway, this is a long time coming, but we, I just wanted to give it to the VFW and the auxiliary, and it, like I said, it's been a while, and, but the feeling is still there. Thank you so much. Thank you very much in, in uh, response. The American Legion and the VFW both participated when your son came back. It was quite a moving experience. And uh, the 
I'm sure everybody knows, but the overpass out here was dedicated to that. So thank you, uh, Cindy, and appreciate the gift. Anything else? Oh, we do have breakfast tomorrow here. Hayes Fire Department, Hayes Fire Department is the <coughs> recipient of it. Uh, starts at 1030 till noon. So, uh, and one last thing, and it's not meant for any certain person, but <laughs> I just, for a years and years when I was growing up, I always heard the National Guard were the weekend warriors. Well, I'm here to tell you now, through my son-in-law and my grandsons and all of the people that belong to the National Guard, they are no longer weekend warriors, people. They serve this country. If it was not for them, we would be in trouble because we don't have draft anymore. So I would once again like to have the National Guard stand and be recognized for what they do. Anything else? Kathy, do you have anything? Before we uh, have our closing prayer, um, I want to thank the Fort Hayes Singers again for coming. My daughter is now an auxiliary member, so I'm very pleased about that. Her name is Rayanna. Rayanna, stand up. She gets the honor of being my child, my one and only. <laughs> and uh, this crew, I don't know all the ins and outs, but they are going on a trip this year. And uh, Dr. Krull could fill you in on that. Uh, but uh, they do have, uh, they're taking donations. It takes money. And I kind of said I would give them a plug if they would come do this for us. So uh, if you'd like to visit with any of the uh, Fort Hayes singers or Dr. Krull, they would certainly be glad to tell you about that. And again, thank you so very much for participating today. And um, I hope you can look at each other, give each other a pat or a hug, or know that we all stand together and we're for the same cause, and it's a really beautiful thing. So without further ado, I would like to invite Pastor Rocco, I believe it's Malardi. Do I have that right? Where is he? This guy's from New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, he is the pastor at the Messiah Lutheran Church. And funnily enough, um, when I met with Mr. Bickle, honest to God, no pun intended, he was reading his Bible when I walked into the office. And he is a member of the Messiah Lutheran Church. And he gave me this big long speech about uh, he was married 53 years to his first wife, and she was a Catholic, and he, he never was. And why he was Lutheran. And then I go to church on Sunday, and Father Leo's homily was on the same thing. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to invite. <laughs> the Lutheran pastor to come, and we are so pleased to have him here today, so thank you, Father. Or fight. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for the service of all who have served in the defense of our nation. We thank you that you have given our nation its freedoms and rights. We thank you for all who have given of themselves in defense of our nation. And we thank you that you use their service, our service men and women, to defend our nation and keep peace in our world today. We ask that you would bless and protect all who serve in our common defense. And we also ask, O oh Lord, that through the blood of your Son, and his sacrifice on our behalf, that you would shepherd our souls, defending us from all evils of both temporal and eternal, and giving to us your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give to you his peace. 
Amen. We thank you, everybody that has, that has participated in this service today. What a, what a great, great crowd, and we really appreciate it. That's what it's all about, taking care of our veterans, and especially these gentlemen behind me. They're all World War II veterans from 90 to about 103. That's, that's quite, a, quite a feat. Uh, before we close, Weiss, we're going to have a luncheon. It's a free will offering. I uh, would like to have you all stay. There's free beer and free other things, Wise. But before we do, I'd like to have all the World War II veterans stay put. We don't take a picture of them. Uh, last year we took a picture of them. We had 22 of them. If you probably, probably can't see this picture, but we lost two of them last year. Doyle Beamgard and Bob Schmidt. So and that concludes our service uh, for the day. And we like again, we thank you and, and God bless you all. Thank you. This salute to our veterans on Eagle Communications Television brought to you by American Shooters, Auto Collision Specialist, Cedarview Assisted Living, Centennial Carpets, Cross Manufacturing, DNL Body Shop, Diamond R Jewelry, Downing Nelson Oil Company, GNL Tire and Automotive, Hayes Convention and Visitors Bureau, Hayes Planing Mill, James Motor Company, Katz Hallmark Shop, Midwest Energy, Orchland Farm and Home, Paul's Lawn and Tree Service, The Pheasant Run, Radkey Implement, Service Master Clean of Hayes, Sternberg Museum, Thirsties, Tri Central Office Supply, Truck Parts and Equipment, Walmart, Walsinger Brothers Plumbing and Heating, Coldwell Banker Executive Realty, Commerce Bank, Gone Logo, Hess Services, Keithley Funeral Homes, Leon's Welding and Fabrication, Patty Bacon Ride Appraising, Steel Fabrications, The Almond Company, and Eagle Communications.